It's a Kings fan feedback show with lots of comments about Pierre-Luc Dubois, Rob Blake, and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years, the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Ever dreamed of becoming an NHL GM and managing your hockey franchise? Well, now you can with Ultimate Hockey GM. It's completely free and Locked On listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On NHL in the game store. To download the game, just visit Hockey GM app or look it up on the app store. Ultimate Hockey GM. Start your dynasty today. We have no real news to share involving the LA Kings from Friday. Uh, They had plenty of that on Wednesday and Thursday. There was an interview, uh, a press conference with new Kings goalie Darcy Kemper, and we'll probably share some of his comments coming up on Monday's show. But this show is all about you and your feedback and all the things that you have to say about the past week involving the LA Kings. Um, so we're going to try and get all the emails in. Hopefully we got a lot. Hopefully we can get them all in. There was some editing done just for time reasons to kind of clean things up a little bit. Uh, that included taking out all of the uh, the kind words that you guys have to say. I really appreciate that. Um, a lot of stuff about, you know, great show, great work. Appreciate you, all that stuff. I, I love those comments. I appreciate them. I read them. I usually take them out, though, just to kind of for time reasons because uh i don't know it also feels like i'm just kind of patting myself on the back when i read that and i'm a little for some reason uncomfortable with that anyway to the show uh this is from chris he's in carson city nevada and he says was not expecting the pld move looked at my phone at work and i had to look twice couldn't believe the update although it is nice to get pld off the books uh when you are looking at what it cost them it was steep i do have to give props to rob blake for not being afraid to make big moves Trading for Arvidsson, trading for Fiala, trading away Cal Peterson, trading for PLD, and now trading him away. Looking at Blake's track record, he definitely has a plan for the team. Blake said that they decided to move on from PLD a few weeks ago. I'm sure that prior to that, he had conversations with Jim Hiller and the Kings captains about PLD and made the decision that it's not going to work. Looking forward to seeing what is going to happen next for the Kings. How will Blake use the extra uh, 3.3 plus million in salary cap? Only time will tell. Go Kings, go. And again, that was from Chris in Carson City, Nevada. Um, I don't, I'm, I don't know how much Rob Blake did talk to Jim Hiller about this. I don't know that he talked to King's leadership about this. I don't know that. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. In the end, he's the guy who has to make the decision. And he's the guy who has to feel the heat or get the praise for any of these deals that are done. Um, certainly, he talked to other people in management about this. Um, I, you know, we all, I think, have mixed feelings about the trade in its totality. You have to praise Rob Blake for getting the Kings out of a bad situation. Um, But also when you look at the total deal uh, all around, it's hard not to say uh, when you trade away a lot of assets and in the end you get Darcy Kemper, that's obviously not a great deal, but I will give him credit, Rob Blake credit for recognizing I made a mistake and I'm not going to just be stubborn and just not admit that I did something wrong. I'm going to try and correct it as best I can now. So we'll give him some credit for making, again, a good situation or the best situation he could out of a bad situation that he created. Uh, This comes from John in Valencia. He says about the PLD trade, well, this came out of left field. I have to say, nice move getting rid of the contract, but gave Velarde, Alex Ayafalo, Rasmus Kupari a second and PLD for a 34-year-old Kemper. I think it's time to move on from Rob Blake. He didn't appear to be the guy with a plan moving forward at his press conference. Obviously, it was important to get Dubois moved, and then let's sit down and figure things out. Quentin Byfield should be moved to center on the second line, and Alex Turcotte center on the fourth line, and we'll be looking to bring in some free agents to help on the wing. Not sure I'm comfortable with Darcy Kemper. We obviously need to hit a home run with this 21st pick coming up in the draft. I would love to get Trevor Connolly, a top-10 talent but off-ice issues, take a chance if he's available. 
Time to get Kaliev back in the fold. Hate to lose him for almost nothing at this point. I guess there are several new questions that need to be answered now. Is Byfield ready to move to center? If not, Deneau falls to number two and Turcotte, maybe the third line center. Do we keep Lazan at this point? What free agents can help? How much do we have to spend? Obviously determines that. Uh, do we look to improve on the left side on defense? What do we do about goaltending? Yes, Portillo may be the starter in a year or two. And does that coincide with Slukinski's advancement? Need more young talent at that position. Obviously a lot to chew on there from John. Um, I would say you mentioned Arthur Kaliev. I don't see him as an option at this point because he wants out. But then again, I didn't see Pierre-Luc Dubois being traded uh, straight up for goalie. So there's there's that. You never know what could happen. Um, I, I agree with you. I think that Byfield is the focus now, not only his contract, but where is he going to play next season? I've said I would have him on the wing for another year. Uh, I want him to stay with those top six minutes uh, unless the Kings are looking to put him at the second line center and move to no down to the third line center. That, that would be very surprising. I don't see that happening. I'd rather him get third line or I should say um, I'd rather him get top six wing minutes than bottom six center minutes, but we'll see. It seems like the Kings are certainly strongly considering that move. Uh, you mentioned Trevor Conley, and again, the NHL draft is going to be a big part of the next week's shows. Um, I, I looked him up. Uh, Elite Prospects has him ranked as low as 11 and as high as 28, so certainly appears to be a player that could be right around 21. Uh, you mentioned his off-ice issues. By the way, he's 18, 6'1", 160-pound left winger. Um, there was a picture on social media that he posted of a friend with a swastika that had been constructed out of children's blocks. Uh, he also was alleged to have used a racial slur, but was cleared of that. Um, he also apparently has tried to do some things to show that he has good character. He's done volunteer work and diversity training since these things came out, obviously to try and help his, his draft stock. Um, I have no idea if the Kings are considering him. I have no idea if, if they have considered him, if they've done their due diligence. Certainly, uh, if you're thinking about taking a kid like Trevor Connolly, who's got some some issues or some red flags. You've got to talk to him a lot. You've got to talk to the people around him a lot. Uh, and again, do your due diligence on trying to vet all this uh, situation and see if he's worth it, if he's worth the risk. And in the end, uh, we'll see. Um, from what, from everything I've read, he's a, he's a very, very talented player. Are the Kings willing to take a risk on him? We'll see. Somebody will. Um, but who will it be? Will it be LA? That'll be very interesting to watch and see where he goes, period. Um, we have a couple of family emails to share. This comes from Robert and Jeremiah. They are the father and son everydayers out of Hawthorne. Uh, Robert, the dad, says, knowing that the Kings could use a little size and toughness should Rob Blake go out and try and get Jake DeBrusque from Boston or Tyler Bertuzzi from Toronto, either would bring some sandpaper and perhaps a bit of scoring touch or just get Tyler to Foley. Uh, and his son, Jeremiah, says, I'm really glad that PLD is gone. I just knew that Rob Blake wasn't going to let him be a king, so now I don't have to worry about his bad contract anymore. I hope Rob Blake gets some good players that can help with scoring like Tyler DeFoley, Patrick Liney, Max Domi, or Anthony Mantha. So I'm guessing uh, Robert and Jeremiah have maybe had some conversations about this around the dinner table. Um, I, I, I would love to see the Kings get Tyler DeFoley. I wanted them to go out and get him at the trade deadline, which they didn't do. He's had some great years since he's left L.A., uh, and the Kings need some more scoring touch, and it'd be great to bring Tyler back to the fold. Um, Jeremiah mentioned Patrick Laine. I would not uh, touch Patrick Laine. Talented guy. He's had issues, though, on and off the ice. And this year for Columbus, he was in the player assistance program, and he, he's he's kind of another Pierre-Luc Dubois type of player. Very talented, but seems like he uh, has not really found his home yet, if you will, and I don't know that the Kings want to go down that road again right after the Pierre-Luc Dubois situation. Uh, the other names mentioned, Jake DeBrusque, Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi. I think those guys could all be very good options for the Kings. We'll see. We go from a father and son combination to a father and daughter uh, combination of Kings fans. Uh, this is from Ed and Suzanne in Orange. Uh, and one of them writes, uh, our attitude towards Rob Blake has been pretty neutral. Uh, we all want a GM to make bold moves. However, when a bold move doesn't work out, it's a bold blunder. Once again, he solved a major $8.4 million error. He not only unloaded a financial problem, he solved a potential goalie problem and freed up $3.2 million in cap space. Time will tell if the goalie side of this deal works out. However, I don't think anyone would have turned down that deal. Go, Kings, go. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Again, um, I give credit to Rob Blake for making the best out of a bad situation, but you also 
can't also hold him accountable for putting himself in the bad situation to begin with. And uh, Ed and Suzanne had some very kind words about talking about finding the show and becoming everydayers and uh, this kind of filling the void during the off season. So thank you guys very much for finding the show. Glad you are enjoying it. Uh, we've got much more reaction on the PLD trade and GM Rob Blake. will do that next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Hey, Locked On Kings fans, I want to tell you about the mobile game, Ultimate Hockey GM. Ever dreamed about becoming an NHL GM and managing your hockey franchise? Do you think you could run the Kings better than current GM Rob Blake? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is most definitely for you. Manage every aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead it to glory. Hire the right coaches and staff, trade players or draft picks, navigate through free agency in the draft, all in a challenging and realistic game world. As a Kings fan, you know there is no offseason. GMs are constantly making moves at every point of the year to improve their team's chances, and that's why I think you're going to love this game. Ultimate Hockey GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go, as you want, when you want, and Locked On listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On NHL in the game store. So make sure you check it out. Download the game. Just visit HockeyGM.app. That's HockeyGM.app, or look it up on the App Store. Ultimate Hockey GM, start your dynasty today. Our next email comes from Callum in Denver. He says, I've been listening to your podcast every morning for about a year straight. Well, thank you, Callum. Uh, he says, I'm not going to pretend I know the free agent market or any other teams around the NHL, but maybe a fun topic for you to discuss uh, with us trading PLD. I feel like we still need a good amount to be a real cup contender, not saying that we'll make the playoffs for sure, but been consistent with making the playoffs of late. You've mentioned a lot about the Kings needing some forwards now that the goalie position is filled, and we're good on that. But let's say you are a GM. What players and key pieces would you make or change to get the Kings in a better position to be a cup contender? Obviously, realistically. Again, that was Callum in Denver. Uh, yeah, obviously, you're not going to, the Kings are not going to go out and get Steven Stamkos or Jake Gensel or any of the really big names out there on the free agent market. Um, and I think a lot has to do with what the Kings' plans are with Quentin Byfield. Where are they going to play him? Um, that would determine, you know, the holes they need to fill. Do they need to bring another center? Do they need to bring another winger or both? Um, I'll, I'll give you one name for each that are unrestricted free agents. I've, I've mentioned Tyler Toffoli on the wing. I'd love to bring him back in. As for a center, uh, I think I'd love to see the Kings target Chandler Stevenson. Uh, he's 30 years old, won a cup recently with the Vegas Golden Knights. I think he'd be a really good second or third line center for the Kings that could give them 50 or 60 points in a season. Um, up next, we've got Gary in Granada Hills, and he says, come on, Eddie, PLD, a bold move. Seriously, no disrespect, but just say what it really was, an empty-headed, unbelievably idiotic, stupid, disastrous move. Blake needs to go. Since 2017, Blake has taken the Kings from having one of the best prospect pools in the whole NHL to the abyss of an average team at best and all under Luke's watch. I understand loyalty, but Blake doesn't have the balls to man up and resign since he's the real problem and should be held responsible, along with Luke, who doesn't have the balls to fire Blake. Well, I'm not sure how a team that made the playoffs is in an abyss, but okay. Uh, yes, Gary, it was a bold move, uh, and and bold moves can be bad. Uh, it was it was bold for the Japanese to bomb Pearl Harbor, and, and uh, that didn't really work out for them. So yes, you can be bold and have it backfire on you, um, so I don't have an issue calling the Pierre-Luc Dubois move a bold move by Rob Blake. Um, look, I certainly don't think anyone should expect Rob Blake to resign. He's not going to just fall on his sword and, and do that. As for Luke having the stomach to fire Rob Blake, I think it's fair to wonder about that. Um, I certainly think that it's possible Blake could be getting some preferential treatment or maybe some extra rope because he's a former legend of the of the franchise. Um you know, it, ultimately, it's up to ownership. It really, you know, it, Luke, whether he would make that move or recommend that move remains to be seen. But, uh, you know, if the Kings don't make the playoffs this year, if they take a step back, if they're losing out financially because fans have spoken, not renewed their season tickets, things like that, then that ultimately will determine whether Rob Blake is, is going to be let go or not or get any more chances. Uh, this comes from Mort in Oregon. He says, potential. Everyone from Little League coaches to GMs and coaches of professional teams rave and obsess about it, but it's like playing with fire and rarely works out. Pierre-Luc Dubois was in two B markets, sorry, Columbus and Winnipeg, 
And the hope was LA would create a spark and it did the opposite. The organization has moved on and we can too. Uh, where does Byfield play? You touched on it and it will continue to be a conversation piece. He's a fearsome four checker that works so well on the top line with Kempe and Kopi. It's hard to move him to center. I do think that he would be a great three C this upcoming season as well. Um, the second power play and perhaps a really good penalty kill guy adding his skating ability, length and scoring to the PK could be a great way to increase his ice time at three C while filling a current hole in the roster. Lastly, Tampa Bay wants to move on from Tanner Janot. He's making over $3 million a year. He hasn't had the same scoring touch of late, but would add some much-needed sandpaper and grit to the lineup and could be uh, had for a mid-pick and maybe Arthur Kaliev. So again, that was from Mort in Oregon. Um, I actually like the idea of Quentin Byfeld on the penalty kill for the reasons that you stated, but I also think you don't want to put too much on his plate. If you're going to move him to center, I don't know that I would add the additional responsibility of being a penalty killer as well. Maybe one or the other. Um, as for Tanner Janot, uh, if you don't know about him, uh, he's a guy who burst on the scene in Nashville, had a really great uh, rookie year. He's a big, tough guy who can drop the gloves and do that as well. But his scoring touch has dropped off significantly since then after he was traded to Tampa Bay. He was kind of the Lightning's Pierre-Luc Dubois. They gave up a ton of assets to get him. Of course, they weren't paying him what they were paying, what the Kings were paying Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, but he's also had some injury issues, and I also checked into it. He's got a 16-team no-trade list. But you're right. Tampa Bay is looking to trade him. They're looking to clear, clear, up, clear up cap space so they can re-sign Steven Stamkos. So I'm, I think he is going to be traded. I think he's an intriguing name for the LA Kings. Could be a very interesting bottom six winger for LA who does bring that size and that skill. So, of course, it always depends on what does Tampa Bay want in return for him. Uh, this, this next email comes from Brian. He's in Cave Creek, Arizona. Uh, he says, uh, Eddie, every day you're here. He says, I'll skip over the PLD talk because, it, because it's done and I don't think it matters much anymore. I want to talk about what the Kings should do going forward. As you know, the job of the GM is to win championships, not just games. And to be honest, this team is not anywhere near that. Rob Blake has two things going for him. Luke is his buddy and ownership has always been extremely patient. What I think he should do is let Matt Roy walk, sign Byfield to a three-year bridge deal, hopefully somewhere around $5 million. Then just sign marginal players and some kids from Ontario to fill out the roster. Tread water next season and give all the young guys a year to get better. Then after next season, they should have enough cap space to offer Leon Dreisaitl a seven-year, $15 million contract. Uh, I don't know if he wants to stay in Edmonton or even if he would want to come to L.A., but I don't think the Oilers could offer him anything like that, having to re-sign McJesus for even more the following year. Uh, you said seven year 15 million dollars it's going to be a lot more than 15 million dollars um i i think matt roy is gone um i i you know with the extra money the kings have now um where are they going to use it certainly is a question um you did mention though i think it was like tread water for a year and then the problem with that is rob blake has is in the final year of his contract so i don't know that he's looking to tread water and then look to make uh, a big splash the following year because he may not be around the following year. So um, there's certainly that. Um, as for Leon Dreisaitl, I don't think the Oilers are going to let him go. They're, they're not really in a bad situation cap-wise except for the Darnell Nurse contract. They've got a lot of pretty reasonable contracts. And yes, they're going to have to pay a ton to keep uh, Dreisaitl and then McDavid, but I, I can't imagine them letting either of those two guys go. Um, so we shall see. Um, we got more on, uh, the Pierre-Luc Dubois situation and more on Rob Blake as well. That's the big topic this week. And understandably so that's next here on lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, LED, uh, exhausts or LED, uh, LED, uh, headlights, uh, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, EV Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. 
Our next email comes from Brian in Los Alamitos. And he says, brilliant trade by Rob Blake to get the Kings out from under the Pierre-Luc Dubois contract and avoid a buyout or retain any salary. However, this doesn't change the fact that Blake had to clean up his own mess again. If next season Dubois returns to scoring 60 or 70 points, do you think it's more of an indication that the Kings missed on PLD or that PLD half-assed it in his first year in LA? I think it's a bit of both, but mostly the Kings not using him in the most effective way possible. Because of this, I believe PLD turned tuned out the coaches and the system. Makes me wonder if Blake told him one thing about how he would be used and then didn't follow through. Still, I think the team is better off without PLD. That was Brian and Los Alamitos. Um, yeah, I, I certainly agree there is blame to go around. Um, it's not all just on Pierre-Luc Dubois, but it, there's some of it certainly is. Um, and I said, you know, after the season, I don't know what the plan was with him. And I thought he would be the second line center at the start of the year. And he never was. So what was the disconnect between coach and GM? And how did that all go down? We don't know the answer to that. Uh, the next email comes from Gary in Orange. He says, I was pleasantly surprised when I found out about the Dubois trade. I think acquiring Darcy Kemper it, to possibly spit, split split this season with David Riddick is a pretty good uh, strategy as we wait for Eric Portillo to develop. I agree that Portillo needs a full season in Ontario. Rob Blake has taken a lot of heat in the last two months, but he did really well to trade Dubois given that he had limited leverage because of the July 1st deadline. This is a good start to the offseason. According to my research, here are a list of players who will most likely be available to the Kings at number 21 in the NHL draft. He said Trevor Conley at left wing, defense, stay in Solberg, centers, Sasha Bove, Jet Luchenko, and Michael Haig. Conley is a high-risk, high-reward type of player who many teams are shying away from because of his off-ice issues. Solberg is a really good defenseman who has a mean streak. He's been moving up in mock draft boards. I think the Kings could benefit from one of these two players, but I also think they might be selected in the late teens. Uh, we talked about Conley earlier. Uh, so we talked about uh, Solberg, Bove, Luchenko, and Haig in the draft episode I did on Tuesday, I think it was. Um, yeah, I think all those guys are potential names to be around 21. I'd be very curious to see what the Kings decide to go with. But those are names that we're now familiar with, and we talked about Conley earlier. This comes from Warren. Uh, he's an everydayer in San Diego. He says, Eddie, can you pretend to be Rob Blake for a moment? And then he says, hi, Rob. Do you remember when the Seattle Seahawks lost the Super Bowl to the New England Patriots, opting for a pass play with a 95% success rate that resulted in an interception? It was a case of a good decision leading to a bad outcome. Rob, I'm curious about your decision to acquire PLD. Looking back, do you have any regrets about your decision-making process? Were there any red flags that you might have overlooked or not even, get, not even uh, put enough weight into? How significant has this move been in terms of its impact on the franchise when you were planning the acquisition of PLD? Did you consider the full range of possible outcomes, including the one that has occurred? Was this particular outcome with PLD something that you anticipated as a possibility? Would you say this was a good decision with a bad outcome? If so, I can live with that. So again, that was from Warren in San Diego. I guess he wants me to speak as, as Rob Blake. Uh, I'm not going to really do that. Um, but I will say that I think, again, Warren brings up a good point. What was the plan with Pierre-Luc Dubois? Was there a disconnect with Todd McClellan? Was this a money ball situation, if you've seen the movie? Um, was there a GM plan that the manager wasn't on board with, that the coach wasn't on board with? I don't know. But uh, clearly, around Pierre-Luc Dubois, of course, there were red flags. Um, a guy who wanted out uh, in Columbus, a guy who asked to be, not asked to be traded, but told Winnipeg, I'm not resigning with you. So I'm basically saying you're going to need to trade me if you want to get something in return. So certainly there were red flags. I, I've got to believe Rob Blake absolutely has regrets. How could he not? But hindsight, as they say, is 2020, and uh, he has moved forward. Um, you, you talk about the red flags, um, and, and it's funny. Everyone thinks the change of scenery is going to be the thing that works, right? We saw the comments from Washington. They're saying the same things that every other team has said about Pierre-Luc Dubois. So uh it, it, about potential yeah and, and that kind of thing it, it's funny um again I, it was a it was a, a bold decision by rob blake didn't work out credit to him for getting out of a bad situation but again you can't clear him of you know not being the one who created it uh, our final email comes from the closer edwin in brea he says i am still shocked and glad we got rid of pierre luc Dubois' contract because having him on the team uh, with that salary was not 
uh, okay for common sense reasons because of his production and effort and uh, completely fraudulent at about 8.5 million props to Rob Blake for doing the right thing and maybe trying to save his job and making a huge mis- uh, making up for a huge mistake as for the team I am excited that we acquired Darcy Kemper adding Kemper uh, again is a large upgrade how often do you get a goalie that's won a Stanley Cup and a world championship too uh, he does not have the numbers or the hardware of elite goalies but however he is a proven winner and I will uh, and will help make another push to a playoff run. Also, with some extra money, uh, I am hoping the Kings get playoff legend Alec Martinez at an affordable deal. Also, in my opinion, I think the Kings may lean towards a bridge deal with Byfield since he's still developing. Since PLD is out, we need another third or fourth line center. Also, I do like the updated new retro logo and seeing what the new sweaters are going to look like, too. And again, that was Edwin. In Bray. And Edwin, you and I will disagree on goalies again, as we do on a weekly basis, it seems. I don't see Kemper as an upgrade over Cam Talbot. Um, I know you put a lot of stock into the fact that Kemper has won a Stanley Cup, uh, and you can't take that away from him. I like it, but I don't think that you can rely on past success. I mean, you know, Brad Johnson and Trent Dilfer were Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. So there's that. Um, I'm hopeful that Kemper can come in and do a solid job. I wouldn't say I'm excited about the chances of seeing what he's going to do, but I'm hopeful. Um, I will agree with you on Alec Martinez. I'd love to see Marty come back and finish his career here. Uh, I think he would be an upgrade on the uh, third pairing on the left side. It would be exciting to see an an old vet like him paired up with a young gun like Brant Clark. Um, The only issue with Marty lately is he has been getting hurt a lot over uh, the final years of his career. Um, but I don't know what his interest is in, is in coming back to LA and finishing his career where it started, but I, I would, I would like to see that. Yes. Real quick. Uh, this comes from Bruce in Long Beach. He says that I have uh, been calling Kings goalie prospect Hampton's Lukinski Hampus. Uh, and I could absolutely see me making that mistake. If so, bad job by me. Uh, I will try and do my best to make sure that I am calling Kings goalie prospect, uh, Hampton Slukinski. Hampton and not Hampus, as in Hampus Lindholm, who's a player in the NHL. So, Bruce, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, while we're on the subject of, of goalie goofs, I did mention on our in our PLD trade show that Darcy Kemper had two years left on his contract, and in, fa- in fact, he has three years left on his current contract. Thank you to everyone who took the time to email the show. Really appreciate it. Obviously, this show is not possible without your participation, and I'm glad I was able to get all the emails in this week. Um, we do this every Friday during the season, during the off season. Uh, so, uh, you guys can continue to have your voice here on locked on LA Kings for you. Every day is those of you that listen and watch locked on LA Kings every day coming up next week uh, on Monday. We'll obviously talk about any Kings news that comes out from over the weekend Wednesday. I'm going to try very hard to get a special guest to talk about the NHL draft Friday. Of course, we'll have another Kings fan feedback show. That feedback show that will be after the Kings have made their first round selection at the NHL draft. So if you want to comment about the player that they take, because we're going to break that down and then get into emails about it and any other things that you have on your mind as well, um, that'll be next Friday's show. It'll be after the NHL first round of the draft, and we will comment on whoever the Kings take, give you uh, the varying opinions on that player, and then have your chance to send your comments afterwards as well for that. The email address to do that is locked on Eddie at gmail.com E D D I E. We would love you to stay interact with the show by following us on social media, X Twitter, Instagram. We are at locked on LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of locked on LA Kings, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. And as always go Kings go.